The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Your feet dragged over the purple carpet that you purchased just for this. On it, you drew a pentagram from gold blood that you had gotten for like four bucks from your local butcher shop. Five black candles from eBay with a mild lavender scent. If this didn't work, you definitely used them for decoration. Then you placed the skull of your high school anatomy dummy that according to your history teacher was in fact a donated real skeleton in the middle. Sorry I have to use you for this, George. Apparently the donator's name was George Kaczynski. I'll return you tomorrow. After that you opened a Tupperware container. On ice it contained 21 chicken hearts. Those you aligned below the pentagram. Just in case, you took the strange book from the library in your hands, reading the instructions once more. Tilting your head, you realigned the hearts. Uh, wait. You just realized you were holding the book the wrong way. Finally, you put the hearts at the right place around the candles. With the final 21st heart neatly placed under the skull. Next, you grabbed a wooden box on it where runes already pre-etched into them by you during work work in class. Into the runes you also rubbed the goat blood. Opening the box below the pentagram, you placed your first baby tooth. Thanks mom for keeping it, you thought. A strain of your hair and your most prized possession. An original Nintendo DS with a 100% finished cartridge of Animal Crossing Wild World. To this day you miss the rudeness of the villagers back in the day. With a racing heart you closed the box. The final steps were approaching. You stood up and undressed down to your underwear. The ritual asked for you to be naked but if this worked you didn't want to be indecent in front of your summoning. Besides, he was like super old, wasn't he? Weren't they all like super modest back then? This probably classified as being unclothed enough. Hopefully. You then grabbed a carefully crafted wand made out of equally carefully cleaned chicken drumstick bones that had been put into the shape of a long finger. And a shaft you had attached crow feathers. According to the do-it-yourself guide in the book, the feather tips were to be attached via pine resin and then dried in the sun until hardened. But when you tried to get pine resin from your high school's trees, you had been shouted at by the janitor, so duct tape it was. The feathers you had gotten from the local crow population. None of the animals were harmed, of course. They just often lost feathers when agitated. Just your luck, the local jocks agitated them for you. You wouldn't have the heart to harm the avians. Not to mention, weren't they like super vengeful and stuff? You kneeled in front of your pentagram, held up the finger-shaped bone wand and then began reading the magic words on the pages out loud. You didn't speak Latin, so you hoped your pronunciation was good enough. Prim? Yes, sir, I apologize for my late arrival. From behind Lucifer appeared his ever so diligent and totally not suspiciously powerful butler, Priminger, the imp. It's fine, I mean, it was less than a second. My god, man. The imp bowed. The two men were inside Lucifer's workshop. A new duck toy creation on the King of Hell's work table. This one had a little clown nose and could walk on water. Take that, Jesus. Nevertheless, I wasn't there at the moment you needed me. Lucifer waved his hand. 
It's okay, it's okay. I just wanted to know what's for dinner. I said outside, it is casserole Sunday. I have picked out cowboy casserole today. It is a simply irresistible dish layered with seasoned ground beef, creamy tomato sauce, corn, beans, and plenty of cheese topped with some tasty and crispy tater tots. Lucifer's mouth watered already from the delectable description. <laughs> Did you say plenty of cheese? The imp nodded. Great! Uh, double whatever plenty of cheese means, okay? Uh, yes, sire. With a white grin, Lucifer began clapping his hands. Well, Imprim, go ahead. The imp bowed. Of course, sir. However, just as Lucifer turned around and was about to take hold of his rubber ducky again, he was confused as he was faced with an unfamiliar bed. Holy shit! shouted a feminine voice behind you. Lucifer looked around. The room he was in was simply adorable. Painted black, cupboards filled with colorful plushies. To his right, an open dresser of loosely hanging black clothes. Like someone had just started being a goth after having a fairy face or something like that. Kind of like Charlie. And as he turned around, the King of Hell was faced with a shaking, cowering little girl. Well, not little. Even in her position of complete fear and surprise, he could tell she was still somehow taller than him. Even though he was definitely much older than her. Oh god, it worked! Oh god! She shouted. He was so flabbergasted, Lucifer was entirely unable to say anything. He just watched the girl reach for a notepad. Just wait until the others hear that! Um, excuse me, he asked. The girl looked up from her notepad. What the fuck is going on? You didn't expect the demon you summoned to look so, uh, white? In your fantasy they were all big, muscular monstrosities, not this gentleman-looking pipsqueak. On shaking legs, you stood up. I, uh, I, uh, I... Oh no, have I been summoned? You blinked. Nah, nah, I can't have been summoned. Prim, this is a, this is a practical joke, right, Prim? Prim? Who is Prim? Lucifer bit his lower lip so hard he almost drew blood. This, uh, this isn't a prank, right? You blinked. Scared, you shook your head. Huh. I just wanted to, you know, play around with this book for the occult club. Lucifer deadpanned. Occult club. Great. He wasn't summoned by some cult that was trying to destroy the world. No, after almost a thousand years of not being summoned by anyone, no demonologists, no witches, no cults, a goddamn high school girl managed to summon him. By pure luck. Well, then again, what ritual did you even use? Uh, can I have it? The text said to never give the book to the thing you summon. Are you kidding me? No. Lucifer sighed. Okay, then. Introductions are now appropriate, I suppose. Hmm. Lucifer took on a dramatic pose with a smirk, spreading his four wings. I am the almighty Lucifer, king of all of hell. Your windows flew open, blowing out the candles dramatically. I... 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 Sum, I, su I summon Satan. Oh god. Oh god, I summon Satan. You slap off hands on your face. Lucifer, you, you wouldn't know how common that mistake is. 
and yeah, are you even listening to me? You had curled up into a ball, rolling back and forth while repeating the words, holy shit, and oh my and God. I mean, technically God doesn't have anything to do with this, Sweeney. You stop moving. Sweetie? He shrugged. What, is that offensive now? I... Well, on some internet circles, but... Uh, no, just... Uh, nobody ever called me Sweetie before. Right, right. A code club. Right. He mumbled. You were a little offended. After a moment of silence, he asked, So, uh... What do I have to do? Huh? These rituals are here to give me one command. You know, this, I'm your master, you obey me now, crap. Uh, usually related to the ritual. I have to fulfill the order before I can go home, so please just give me the order. Oh, 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 oh obey me. Okay, alright, Lucifer is obeying me now. Mm -hmm. Th that is something I can deal with this right now. You were beginning to have an anxiety attack. But after you caught yourself, you quickly grabbed the book, flicking through the pages. Uh, you, you haven't even read the entire ritual? I, I thought it wouldn't work. I just chose the one that looked like easy to replicate. You know, the one that didn't require me to kill anything. Right, right. As you were trying to find the correct pages, Lufather took a step off the pentagram he was standing on. He looked at it, titting his head in the process. Wait, did you get that skull without killing anyone? Huh, how times have changed. Hmm. But this ritual pentagram looks a little familiar. He couldn't quite remember from where he knew it. But he felt as if this one had been quite common a couple hundred years ago. But he couldn't quite pinpoint it. Ah, here, page 366. You turned the book for him to see. Hang on. Wait. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Lucifer stretched out his finger. He touched the page, sliding his finger down... That feeling. He knew that feeling. Those pages. Oh, you bitch! You blushed. No, not you. I, I'm not talking about you. I, I mean Adam. Adam is in Bible Adam? Yes, Bible Adam. God, do you learn nothing in school? Lucifer angry sat down on your bed. What you got there is a skin Bible. A Bible made, yes, out of the skin of Adam before he was kicked out of the Garden Eden. Uh, no, they're not actually Bibles. As you probably realize, they're not Bible stories. It's just filled with rituals and spells. Uh, the spells are just there for distraction. They, they don't work for obvious reasons, but the rituals, like half of them do. Wow. They've written the ink of the first squid God ever created. Seriously? And it's a prank book. You blink confused. P prank book? Yeah. To prank me specifically. He spread these things all around the world so I don't get a night's sleep because mortals would try to fuck with me and other demons by constantly summoning us to do stupid shit. A strange feeling of disappointment took hold of your heart. Let me think. The last time someone successfully used the skin bible was in the... 1630s? I think I distinctly remember pranking some separatists on their New England farm. He blinked and decided not to tell you that this little, uh, prank ended up with everyone dying to their superstitions and inability to take a joke, and only partially on religious-based hallucinations. Thought they had all been destroyed by now. I'm kind of disappointed in my cleaning up skills. So part of the prank is that you obey me now? 
He narrowed his eyes. I mean, I need to do what the ritual tells me to do. Okay. Uh, hang on, are you a virgin? I'm in the occult club of my high school. He blinked. Okay, okay. Uh, is it okay if I make a quick phone call to my daughter? I, I think I just realized what's going on here. Um, I, I guess? It's some privacy. He said after pulling out a golden smartphone from his pants. Um, sure? You left your room through your bedroom door. This was going all sorts of ways and you didn't know how to feel. Meanwhile, Lucifer was sweating profusely. Come on, come on, come on. Dad? On the FaceTime appeared Charlie. She was in her PJs. Hey, Char Char, uh, I, I gotta ask you something. Dad, I was getting ready for bed. What's up? She looked tired. Yeah, uh, so, um, funny thing, I was summoned by a human. Instantly, Charlie was hyper awake. Wait, what? She pushed her face against the phone to try and make out the surroundings of where Lucifer was. Yeah, and, um... He grabbed the skin bible and held up the page in front of the camera. Without him having to say anything, Charlie read the text. Dad, you told mom your goat face is over. Lucifer blushed. This isn't about goats. Really? Prove it. Show me there aren't any female goats around. She sounded angry. And annoyed, Lucifer spun around in the room. But only after he returned his gaze to the screen did he see that Charlie's angry blush had turned to utter embarrassment. Does she know she summoned you for... you know? He shook his head. Fuck. Dejected Lucifer sat down on the bed. This thing has to go. He mumbled towards the book. Dad? Like, right now. The faster the better. Dad? Man. It was a goat. I wouldn't have to worry. Dad! Lucifer looked at the phone. Can I talk to her? Lucifer remained silent for a moment. She needs to hear it from someone that isn't you. With his head hanging low, Lucifer stood up, walked over to the door, opened it, and then held out his phone. Uh, for me? On it was a rather cute girl, though you could tell she wasn't human. You took it. Uh, uh, hello? Lucifer closed the door loudly. Hi, uh, my name is Charlie, Charlie Morningstar. Pleasure meeting you. She forced a smile in a very obvious way. Awkwardly, you then introduced yourself out of courtesy. Oh, that's a super cute name. Uh, you know, uh, um, I named my first puppy like... Never mind. Um, I'm losing focus. Okay, so... You meddled with things that are far beyond, uh, you know, your comprehension. I just wanted, you know, for fun. I, I know, for just for fun. A lot of humans do it for fun, but... 99% of times it never works, and this is like the 0.1% chance where something actually happened. Uh, so do you know what the ritual was for? You shook your head. It's a fertility ritual. You blushed hard, eyes widening. It was initially used to impregnate witch covens. Charlie strategically kept the knowledge of the goats from you. Your body began to shake a little. Um, so the thing is, the ritual requires you two to... you know... Wait, he has to impregnate me? You said scared. I I'm 18. I don't even know how to be a mother. Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. Don't worry. She said. The ritual only states that you have to do the act that results in a child with him. It doesn't mean that you actually have to have it. She tried to talk calmly to not make you even more afraid. So he can use protection? 
Charlie Never Her Eyes. Well, by the time it was written, something like protection didn't exist, so it's a loophole. You bit your lower lip. Your heart was beating fast, and a bead of sweat ran down your forehead. Charlie tilted her head. Not to be nosy, but something tells me you were kind of hoping for this outcome. You squeaked. She had looked right through you. It's okay, just teasing you. All right, well, uh, go in when you feel ready, okay? And don't make him do anything weird, like turn into a goat. What? Never mind. Just remember, you summoned him. He has to obey you. You don't have to obey him. Got it? You nodded slowly. Now, uh, I need to take a long, cold shower and forget this conversation ever happened. Yeah, I mean, no kid wants to know when their parents... She raised a finger. Please don't finish that sentence. Sorry. It's okay, and, um... Just a side note, very important, that's like the first thing you learn in hell. Don't agree to any deals. Got it? Okay, got it. All right, bye! She said cheerfully, though you could tell it was... kind of faked. And so Charlie hung up. You sighed. Deeply. And then opened the door to your room. Lucifer was impatiently sitting on your bed, his arms crossed, head placed on his neatly folded suit jacket on your desk chair. Um, hey. You huffed awkwardly, sitting down next to Lucifer. Um, so like, uh, do you have my soul after this? Nah, told you. Prank book. Right. You furred your brows. Weird prank, huh? The intention was, if I can't have Lilith, well, Lilith can't have you. You know, jealous I stole his girl, and now she has to deal with the fact that she has to share me. Is Lilith gonna come after me? Ah. We have been divorced for seven years, not like she cares. You did the math in your head. Oh, so it just happened for you. More or less... He looked at you and smirked painfully. You know, you're the first one to say that, by the way. Normally I get to hear, it's been seven years, just get over it. You shrugged. I mean, you two were together for thousands of years. Exactly. You can't just get over that in seven. Gently, he nudged your back. You're right, kid. I'm 18. And I'm older than humanity itself. Jeez, this is weird. But Leonardo DiCaprio can do it. Why not you? Lucifer chuckled. Oh, if only you knew. Uh, well, you said, placing your hands on your hips. You must obey me, so uh, do the thing you have to do to me to get back. He chuckled. <laughs> Only if you burn the skin Bible. And never tell a soul. Got it? You were about to have your first time with a demigod. How was any guy ever going to beat that? And it seemed like he read your mind. And he got an idea. Okay then, let's make a deal. But Charlie said, shush. You look down at your feet. You give me the skin Bible. So I can destroy it. And when we are done with... Uh, this... Before I leave, I'll change your memories around a bit. You will think this was all a dream. A very realistic dream and a very pleasurable one. This way... <laughs> guys don't have to live up to me after this. He sounded really proud of himself. Your lips quivered. Sure. Yes, that would be unfair. Deal. 
You shook hands, and as you looked into each other's eyes, you smiled. Now, kiss me. You ordered and blushed. With a gentle expression, Lucifer leaned forward, pressing his divine lips onto yours. And wow, that alone was better than anything you could have ever imagined. Energy was crackling from his lips, electrifying your entire being in a wonderful, sinful way. This kiss alone, you felt deep down into your core. You placed a hand on his chest. He wasn't buff, but you could feel how toned he was, simply by brushing against his shirt. He yeah, unpleased, and slowly you pulled away, locking eyes again. Touch me, you ordered, causing Lucifer to smirk. Gently he pushed his body into yours, his hands exploring your form while pushing you down into the bed. You gasped. He knew exactly where to touch you and when to touch you. He gave you no moment of rest. <sighs> His lips touch your neck, your cheek, your lips. And his hands buried themselves under the fabric of your bra, tightly squeezing your flesh until you moaned in pleasure and pain. Uh, should, shouldn't I be on top, you know, because of the obey stuff? <laughs> and make you do all the work? He mused. Is that what you want? Your eyes wallowed for a moment. Just so you know, I would obey that. Your hands found his cheeks, cupping his face gently. Your breaths came quick and shallow. I want you to do me like I'm Lilith, begging you to come back to you. For a moment he looked at you dumbfounded, and then rubbed over his neck in embarrassment. <laughs> You're probably expecting something kinky, but I would just keep going like we're doing now. You chuckled. <laughs> oh, you're a little softy. That's okay. I'm too. Almost proudly he looked down at you. So yeah, a little roleplay. Where were we? Lelith. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.